I am so glad you're here. As a practicing organometallic chemist myself, this is my absolute favorite topic in all of organic chemistry. So if you're here to learn about organolithium and organomagnesium compounds called Grignard reagents, and if you're here to learn about lithium dialkylcuprates and the Simmons Smith reaction using organozinc compounds, then you're in the right place. And make sure you stick around to the end because I have some practice problems that should help you on your organic chemistry exam. Organometallic compounds are unique in that they bridge the gap between organic and inorganic chemistry. Organometallic compounds always contain a metal to carbon bond, and this generates unique reactivity and functionality that doesn't exist in normal organic compounds. Remember that the electronegativity for a carbon atom, according to the Pauling scale, is around 2.5. And a metal is going to be typically a, an atom or an element that contains an electronegativity that is lower than 2. And what this does is create a unique dipole where you have a partially positive end at the metal and a partially negative end on the carbon. And this is different than the way carbon typically behaves in organic chemistry where it acts as an electrophile because now we have a metal to carbon bond which generates a carbon nucleophile. Organolithium compounds such as alkyl lithiums are powerful nucleophiles and bases valued for their ability to undergo a variety of reactions including nucleophilic addition substitution. Being strong bases, both Grignard reagents and organolithium compounds will react with things that are relatively weak acids. For example, water will even be deprotonated by both of these in order to generate a new alkyl species. So both of these reactions act as bases towards the proton in water. Importantly, however, in the absence of an acidic proton, the nucleophile carbon will attack carbonyl carbons to generate new alcohol compounds where you add on the brand new R group and after acidic workup, you end up with a new tertiary alcohol. Upon adding Grignard reagents to aldehydes following acid workup, the carbon backbone is added and an alcohol remains. Esters are actually susceptible to nucleophilic attack by two Grignard reagents, allowing new carbon chains to be added twice at the carbonyl carbon, resulting in tertiary alcohol formation. As we've seen previously, an epoxide ring is strained and practically spring-loaded toward attack by nucleophiles like Grignard reagents. This results in the formation of a new bond to carbon and opening of the ring. Grignard reagents will even attack the carbon in CO2, a traditional unreactive greenhouse gas, allowing for the formation of carboxylic acids. It's also possible to generate organocopper reagents like that of a Grignard reagent. However, because of the electronegativity difference between the R group carbon and copper being so small, this doesn't generate the same type of dipole, and for that reason, this carbon is not going to be very nucleophilic. However, what we can do is take a copper salt, and the way that we generate this organocopper compound is to add an organolithium compound to create the new R group bound copper. And if we add a second equivalent organolithium reagent, then this allows us to generate what are called organocuprates. So this places two R groups on the copper, making it negatively charged, and leaving behind the lithium as the counter ion. And again, this is called an organocuprate. Similar to how Grignard reagents react with electrophiles at the carbonyl carbon position, organocuprates will do the same by forming a new carbon carbon bond at that carbonyl carbon. However, importantly, after acidic workup, this only adds to an acid chloride a single R group. And recall that what would happen if you added a Grignard reagent following acidic workup is that you would actually add two of these R groups to generate a tertiary alcohol. So importantly, these organocuprates are a little bit less nucleophilic than Grignard reagents. And what this means is that if we have a situation where we have a ketone and an alkene, what will happen is that since this organocuprate is slightly less nucleophilic compared to a Grignard reagent, rather than adding at the carbonyl carbon position, this will actually add at the carbon of the alkene. This is called a 1,4 addition. And what this would generate following acidic workup would instead leave that ketone unreacted and form our new R bond at this position here. Again, this is following acidic workup. So notice that this is a 1,4 addition instead of addition at the, at the electrophilic carbonyl position. The last class of organometallic compounds that I'd like to cover in this video are organozinc compounds. What happens is you take a carbon with two iodines on it, 
introduce it to a reagent that contains zinc and copper in diethyl ether, and this generates our new organozinc compound, where the zinc inserts into one of the carbon to iodide bonds. And we're not going to get into it too much in this class, but this forms a class of effectively what are known as carbenes, where you generate a carbon that is neutral that basically contains a lone pair, and this is going to be a really strong nucleophile. And what happens when you use these organozinc reagents is that you can actually generate cyclopropyl rings this way. So what happens is you end up getting a TAC, generating a brand new three-membered ring, leaving behind our zinc reagent, and generating this new carbon-carbon bond that is now a three-membered ring called a cyclopropyl ring. This is called a Simmons-Smith reaction. Now let's try some practice problems. On the screen, you'll see a series of questions. I'd like for you to pause the video and try them independently, then resume the video to check your answers. For the first question, I see that the carbonyl carbon has been transformed into a carbon that contains a tertiary alcohol on it. Importantly, this has been through the addition of a methyl group and a propyl group. So I see all the different bond breaking and making that must have occurred at that carbonyl carbon. And today we learned about a reaction that will allow us to do that. One of those is called a using a Grignard reagent, using acidic workup to allow for the formation of alcohols at carbonyl carbons. Now importantly, when you add a Grignard reagent, to an aldehyde, if you follow with that with acidic workup, this generates an alcohol. And remember, we still have our hydrogen there, and then we also have our brand new methyl group, which we've installed. Now importantly, what you have learned about previously is a reaction that will allow for the oxidation of alcohols into ketones. One of the reagents that we've learned about, in addition to several others, is PCC. And this will generate a brand new carbonyl carbon where the alcohol has been turned into a ketone. And now once we've generated this ketone with a methyl group on it, we can add another Grignard reagent, but this time, as long as it is a propyl group, we can follow that up with an acidic workup to generate and install that propyl group on the end. The next question is a typical exam type question where you're expected to walk through a multi-step synthesis to generate a product. Using information you learned about in previous organic chemistry courses, the very first step is addition using hydrobromic acid to an alkene. And remember that these electrons are going to attack that proton, that acidic proton, kicking off the bromide and leaving behind a carbocation at the most stable position, which is going to be that tertiary carbocation. And then subsequently what will happen is that bromide that was kicked off will actually attack at that position and add there. So for that reason, the molecule that is generated here is going to add the bromine at the most substituted position and the hydrogen will go to the other carbon atom. And then from here, what one of the reactions we learned about today is forming Grignard reagents. Okay, so the magnesium will insert itself into a carbon halide bond, except for fluorine, and this will generate, and this is actually how you generate, Grignard reagents. So the Grignard reagent will be formed at that position allowing for us to use this Grignard reagent in subsequent nucleophilic attack reactions. So remember, this is going to attack at this carbon position, and it is going to readily attack the electrophile at a carbonyl carbon. And following acidic workup, this is actually going to generate a new tertiary alcohol. So for this reason, when we go to draw our product, what we have is, remember, we have added the carbon at this position here. This is going to generate that alcohol, and then we're still left with our two methyl groups as part of our original reagent of acetone. So for that reason, this is the final product of all of these different steps. Addition using hydrobromic acid, formation of a Grignard reagent, and then nucleophilic attack at that carbonyl carbon. For the final question, you were asked to form a new fused ring system where you have a cyclohexane ring fused to a cyclopropyl ring. And today, in this video, we learned about the Simmons-Smith reaction to form cyclopropyl rings using organozinc reagents. But in order to do so, those organozinc reagents have to add to things like an alkene. So for that reason, when we have our starting bromocyclohexane ring, I see that in order to form this new cyclopropane ring, I first need to eliminate this bromine. And we can do that by adding a base, like uh, sodium ethoxide, for example, and this will allow us to deprotonate one of these hydrogens, bringing down the electrons and kicking off the bromine, generating our new cyclohexene ring. And then from there, all I need to add 
is my reagent that allows for the cyclopropanation of an alkene. And the reagent that would do that is going to be CH2I2 with zinc and copper in some ether, like diethyl ether, for example. And again, we covered this in this video. This is called the Simmons-Smith reaction, where you form new cyclopropyl rings using these organo-zinc reagents. If you enjoyed this video introducing organometallic chemistry, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions at all about this video or anything else related to chemistry, make sure you drop it as a comment down below, and I'd be happy to help you out. I'll see you in the next video.